happy to see such a crowd here in Kulimi in our temporary shop of Lukta Kaiborg and Builders. Uh, we are here because we needed height. The organ is about 25 feet in height and I had no place to put it. And it's because it's going overseas. I took no chances. I didn't want to put it in pieces and then test it in place because if anything goes wrong, I have no way to fix it. So we, we insisted on putting everything together in, a, in some sort of a space and uh, very kind people here at the Stokes County Yarn Company rented us this space which works very well. It's cold though. <laughs> <laughs> next, next time I need some heat. This, this was ridiculous at times. Anyway, uh, very happy to see that many people to show up for this. I think it's, it's very important that we foster this art, that we take care of uh, this kind of uh, initiative to, to bring some culture to the community. Um, and uh, I'm just going to talk for a very, very short time about this organ just to introduce what it is and how it works, where it goes, and then I will give it to uh, Tim Olsen, who is going to do most of the work. I'm just making an introduction here. So, this organ is uh, built for a church, very modern design uh, of, a, of a building in Denmark. And I have a little bit of a bragging rights here because this actually will be the very first American built pipe organ that goes to Denmark. And why is this so important that, that this is, uh, why is this an accomplishment? Because uh, Denmark is a tiny country in, in uh, Northern Europe with only 5 million population and extremely high quality uh, standard of organ building. It's a mecca of organ building. Uh, our competitors included three of the largest and more, most famous firms in Europe, and we won. <laughs> It was not an easy win. Uh, the Danes actually came to Greenville, North Carolina, where our last instrument is standing, and we have people here from Greenville. Uh, where are you? Ah, yes. So the delegation of four people from Denmark came to take a look at the instrument that we built. They had to look at it, they had to play it, they had to listen to it, and that's how things happened that we won this contract. Um, so, we are making a little bit of history here, and um, the instrument is not very big. Uh, in terms of size of the instrument, I would say it's a medium leaning toward large. It's two manuals and a pedal, 27 stops, 36 ranks, mm, only 2,000 pipes. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. It's okay. Um, Everything is uh, on a very tiny footprint uh, because the choir loft, if you can see this white line here on the floor that we have, this is the choir loft. So we had to squeeze everything. They gave us a very tiny place to really put, put all of this instrument in one, in one spot. Um, and it was quite challenging to come up with the, with the layout of the organ. The pedal section, the biggest pipes, are against the wall behind everything on the lower, on the lowest level. Then in front of this, where you see this fancy <coughs> copper pipe work and everything, that's the first, that's the lower manual, the grate. Um, and then above this, obviously, is the swell box with the, for the second manual, where the pipes are standing for the second manual. Uh, it is a tracker, meaning it's a fully mechanical instrument. The player has to use the muscles to open the valves. There is no artificial assist of any sort. What you have in your hands is what you get. No electric, no pneumatic, nothing. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, that only raises the bar for us to, to make everything so precise that it actually is light and comfortable to play for an organist. Because it's a mechanical linkage that connects the keys to the valves inside. Now, then you see the electronics, too. This is called a stop action. What, what the registers, the, the drawn-ups, that's controlled electronically for convenience. Um, everything else is uh, built from really, really 
high quality materials. We don't make our own metal pipes. Many people are asking me, do, I, do you make your own pipes? No, I do not, because it simply makes no sense for the client. Uh, we would have to raise the price, it makes no sense, and then we would have to deal with lead. Thank you very much. Uh, we get the pipes for very high quality pipe makers. All of this metal pipe work came from Holland. It's Dutch made. Beautiful, beautiful craftsmanship, really. And then it comes uh, completely virgin. It doesn't play, it doesn't make a sound at all. I have to voice it all. Um, this one took a uh, ballpark of three months to voice, uh, to, give, to give the sound to each and every one of pipes, of those pipes that I have to handle several times until it's done. Uh, we make our own wooden pipes, pretty much everything wood that you see we make ourselves. I guess this is it in a nutshell, I don't want to really talk too much about it. Um, I'm again very very happy to see you and I am presenting to you Dr. Timothy Olsen who is uh, organ professor at the University of North Carolina School of the Arts in Winston-Salem and also organ professor at Salem College, which I understand is a school for the girls. Okay, so it's all yours. Tom mentioned that this organ is all mechanical action, and uh, his little comment to me about good luck was, uh, was actually a positive comment because a lot of organists prefer a mechanical action because of the sensitivity that the organist can feel when they are playing. And so that's something that I prefer and I'm, I'm thrilled that this is a mechanical action organ and that I can control how fast or how, or how slow each of the pallets opens to underneath the pipe. Uh, so you see the two manuals here. On each manual there are different types of colors or different types of sounds for each of those um, stops. And I've chosen about a half an hour program or so, uh, beginning with, of course, Bach. And um, hopefully, I think I can get through most of the sounds that are on here. Um, and I will talk just briefly in between each piece to let you know what the piece is and what some of the sounds you will hear from this particular piece. So on Bach, we will hear the principal chorus at eight foot, four foot, two foot principles, and some of the reeds as well. Uh, I'm going to play the prelude in D major uh, without the fugue for time's sake. And um, it's in three major sections. It begins with uh, a, a D major pedal scale, and so you get to start with the feet. If by chance you want to get up and walk around during the recital, I don't have a problem with that. If you want to see some of the parts moving while I'm playing, that's okay with me. Uh, try not to distract your other people here who may be wanting to listen really closely, but um, if you want to get a sense of what it looks like in action, feel free to come forward.
The next piece I will play is by the, the Dutch composer Jan Peterson Svelink, who lived in the late 16th century over into the turn of the 17th century. Uh, this is a set of variations on the folk tune Under in Lindegrun, or Under the Green Linden Tree. And this will feature some of the softer, gentler stops of the organ, the flutes and the strings, and some of the, the lighter principal stops.
contemporary French organist, composer, improviser, Guy Beauvais. It's called Salamanca. It comes uh, out of a series of improvisations that he did and then later wrote them down and turned them into compositions. It begins very interestingly by having the organ imitate a drum and fife core. So it uses an eight-foot flute as a cluster, a bunch of notes right next to each other to imitate that of a, a little drum, and then a two-foot flute which imitates a piccolo. And then from there he goes on to various different guises, but it's a very interesting piece that begins very quietly and then crescendos to a very dramatic, uh, sort of raucous kind of dance. Salamanca. Yes. Everybody, I am telling you, you are missing out on the greatest acoustics in the world. <laughs> Sounds so much better back there. You know, we set up.
next piece is a set of variations on um, the hymn tune Dundee, set by uh, David N. Johnson. Some of you may know his famous, famous trumpet tune, which is on the beginning of the program, with heart and voice. Uh, he wrote many, many, many settings, wonderful settings of hymn tunes. This is sort of a set of variations. Uh, some of them are just straightforward uh, hymn arrangements. Um, and this, again, will feature some of the, the various wonderful colors that are on this organ. Uh, the four-foot flute in one of the variations, the four-foot gemshorn, uh, the eight-foot principal as a solo line, um, and various other gentler sounds. So I hope you enjoy this set of variations by David N. Johnson.
This is Cesar Fromm's prelude fugue and variation. The prelude and variation are essentially the same except for the left hand is the varying part. And the middle part, the fugue, um, is based on parts of the prelude. So prelude, fugue, and variation by Cesar Fromm.
20th century tradition, that of Maurice Duraflay. This is the fugue from the Prelude and Fugue on the name of Alain. This was a piece written in homage to his good friend Jean Alain, who was killed in the war. And um, the piece is actually based on the name Alain. If you take the name Alain, uh, the normal alphabet, and repeat the musical alphabet on it, you get the, the musical name of Alain spelled A-D-A-A-F. And it's a double fugue, meaning there are two different subjects. It begins with the Alain theme. The second theme is a um, sort of a reminiscent of bells tolling. And then he combines them in a very masterful way to create a very wonderful tribute to his dear friend, Jean Alain. So the fugue on Alain. And if I could give a page turner again, that'd be great. <laughs>
beginning, uh, how important it is for us to, to be able to showcase this kind of culture in the community. It's also important to teach the young ones how to play such fine instruments. So, you will find brochures over here from the two schools that I teach at. And I also <laughs> would like you to know that I do a summer week uh, camp at School of the Arts for high school, junior high and high school age kids. So, if you know many students out there who play the piano really well and might be interested in the organ, or play the organ and would like to spend a week at School of the Arts uh, in all of the wonderful instruments in our, our area, feel free to have them get in contact. But thank you for coming today. Hope you enjoyed the good evening. Wine. Wine.